how are we all doing today? Good? Are we all enjoying the festivities of the Christmas show? Have we all, have we all got what we've come for today? Yeah? Okay, good stuff. Well, my name's Julian Hall, and today my presentation is going to be entitled Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur, and how I think that idea and that concept can help make entrepreneurs more successful. So let's start with who I am. So I was born in Halston, North West London. I went to a school in Hammersmith called Atomar Upper School. I then promptly did what most entrepreneurs did and fell out of the university and went into my second year. Um, hop, skip and a jump into my career and I worked for a number of major corporations. But I always had this entrepreneurial itch that I wanted to scratch. So around 2002 I bought my first dot com um, and it didn't quite work out as well as I thought it would and I realised that I had to learn some of the basic strategies around how to market a business. So I did that and the business started to do quite well. I then used that learning to start my own consultancy which is called EH Online. And I then started to develop, to develop more, more and more brands, more and more products. We developed the first citizen journalism site in 2007, one of the boards of that. Um, I started an advertising network in the Caribbean. Um, started my own uh, development and social media agency called The Online Genius. Um, and then I developed that brand even further to the brand that we are showcasing today, the show today, to quite one on called The Entrepreneur. I've spoken in over 10 different countries. I've written three best-selling books, one on 10 secrets of social media marketing, Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur, 100 Ways to Work Your Game, and just a few months ago, Ignition, How to Start Up a Technology Startup. Last year, I've helped over 200 different companies raise investment for their companies. But really, the question is, and what I'd like to get to is, why am I here today? Now, in my previous incarnation as an employee for some of these major corporations, I became quite fascinated with the fact that these corporations, they didn't do really well because they had services or products that were greatly different from their competition. What they did really well was optimise processes. So they were very good at looking at the micro and the macro processes within their businesses and the more effective and efficient those processes were, the more revenue they could generate, the more efficient and the more profitable those companies could be. So having that ingrained in me as a, as a professional, when I started my own business, in my own startup company, I thought, let me think about what the processes are of an entrepreneur. Because by this time I realized I had one company, two hours of repeat, slash serial, clear entrepreneur. So I was fascinated by what made entrepreneurs successful. So as you knew, I read all of the personal development books, I had a look at the biographies of really successful entrepreneurs. And I was trying to look at the process, I was trying to look at what made the brain or the mind of an entrepreneur tick. But the problem that I had was I was externalising the success factors. I was looking at something outside of me, I was looking at something that did somebody else to try and work out a process. And I didn't have a very, very good time of doing that. So the question is then, why are you here today? And you're here today because you are either starting a business or you're in a business that you're trying to grow. And when you look at the word business, it's from the 18th century word from an etymological perspective. And it, it means literally to be busy. It means busyness, the act of being busy. But we all know that really successful entrepreneurs shouldn't really be that busy that they can't sit down and take a high level view of what their business is doing, be able to strategize and be able to manage their time, right? So I thought to myself, well maybe I don't want to be busy, maybe I don't want to be stressed out, maybe I don't want to have to do all of my time to my friends and family and my own health and so on. And then I realized, well actually, this is the definition of an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur, the definition comes from the French word entreprendre, which means an undertaking, which is very different to uh, the definition of a business. And it was actually one of a, um, to French musicians, right? Because when they were undertaking a piece of music. So it gives a very different connotation to what we as, as entrepreneurs who uh, consider themselves entrepreneurs. So it made me think, okay, maybe I'm at, in the act of doing uh, or, or, or an undertaking, undertaking something which is bigger than me. Undertaking something which fulfills uh, my, my vision, my goals, and my purpose. And I'm, perhaps I'm wrapping that around the business. The question is, why should you actually be here? So you're here to do a business, but why should you be here? Now, 
for anyone who's seen uh, the, the recent Muppet film, right? Uh, we have Kermit to the right, or to the left, shall I say, and then we have his evil twin imposter to the right. But they look the same, Muppet, but there are very slight differences, right? So the question is, which one are you? Are you the real deal, Holy Field, or are you the imposter? Are you the fake? Are you the person that should be there? Let me take a step back and let me explain why I put this slide up. Because I've started more business models than I can remember. And I've failed in more business models than I can, you know, part of my joke about the amount of business that I've started and failed. But when I first started the business that really got off the ground and actually saw profit and saw revenue and saw more customers come to me, I sat back after a couple of years and I thought, why is this business working for me? So I tried to reverse engineer the process. And what I realised was it was a business that I was and it was something that I was really good at. Now, the reason I break those two things and in the two and separate them is because we are always told, just do what you're passionate about, right? When you get into business, follow your passion. You've only got to watch X Factor to know that there are people who are passionate about singing or entertaining, but they're never really going to make it as, as an entertainer. And you all you've only got to do is go to the city of London and look at people who are really, who are really excellent um, at their jobs, right? But they hate their 9 to 5, they, they put up pictures on Facebook about how they hate Mondays and they can't wait for Fridays. And surely, that's not the way forward, in my estimation. That's, that's not what I, not what I wanted for my life. So, I realised that I was actually genuine. I was going into a business that I should be going into. And what I was doing previously, I was looking for businesses that just make money. And one of the things that I say is, if you were just chasing the money, the money will keep running. And that's exactly what happened to me, but I couldn't work out why. So I was going into industries that were either, you know, the latest trend, or I could make loads of money, or because business partners of mine were going into those industries. But really, I was an imposter. I shouldn't have been there. And there were lots of individuals who were trying to start the business, who were looking for business opportunities, and they have been sold the kids to the glamour of this business model works, this model they can be in there overnight. What you've got to think to yourself is, do you want to go into a market where there are people who genuinely do that business, or people who are genuinely passionate about that business? Because if you, if you do go into an industry where you are not, you know, where you're not really genuinely passionate about it, what happens is, work starts to become very tiresome. For the people who are passionate about any industry that they go into, whether it's the legal sector, whether it's travel, whether it's um, technology, whatever it is, at some point when things become difficult, their passion overrides that, that, that tiresome feeling that they get. And they realise, actually I'm doing this for the purpose of things because I really enjoy it and I'm really passionate about it. So then the big question is, why do most of us fail? And this is a massive area of learning because if we can stop entrepreneur haters and that rate, then maybe we too can become more successful. But I've considered this for some time, and the question is flawed. And the reason the question is flawed is because entrepreneurs are actually supposed to fail. So let me say that again. Entrepreneurs are actually supposed to fail. The reason why they're supposed to fail is because up until now, potentially, there has not been a process that entrepreneurs can pull out of a drawer and follow to become successful. So entrepreneurs have had to learn through failure. Let me say that one more time. Entrepreneurs have had to learn through failure. So therefore, what we've discovered is that there was actually a strategy to failure, right? And if you Google fail fast, you'll see one of my sayings come up, and it says, fail fast, fail cheaply, but fall forward. And this is the strategy for failure. So, there is nothing wrong with failing. As we know, as a child riding the bike, learning to walk, you're going to fall down. But the reason why most entrepreneurs fail is because they cannot recover from, from the mistakes that they make. They cannot recover from the, from the financial losses or the psychological impact of being able to fail, right? So the idea of being able to fail really quickly, so that means, and this is going back to the, to the very old traditional ways of doing business, doing things very simple like test your market, right? Um, do things, do, do a test campaign for your market, um, do case studies, do lots of market research. But the problem that happens is because entrepreneurs are so passionate, right? We dismiss and dispel some of the, um, even the, the advice that we get from our coaches, and we spend the 10, 20 grand straight away on that business opportunity, only to work out in the end that it hasn't worked. And then sometimes we can't recover from such a financial loss. Um, I used to do judo, and one of the first things I learned in judo was actually how to break your fall. Because in judo you're going to fall, and in lots of sports you're going to fall, but they, they teach you how to break your fall. So it's a strategy of learning how to hit the ground and then to be able to recover and get back up. 
But the idea is that this should be a strategy around failure because you are going to fail. And you do need to fail fast. I don't know, has anybody ever seen somebody fall really slowly? You know you're going to fall, you're grabbing onto a chair, you're grabbing onto somebody else, and you fall really slowly and it looks really awkward, right? And you probably end up hurting yourself a lot more, a lot more than if you just fell really quickly, than if you fell forwards, right? So it sounds comical, but in actual fact, that's what a lot of businesses do. When they're about to fall and they know they're falling, they grab onto everything that they can before they hit the ground, and that can take them three, six, nine, twelve months. And anybody can see them falling, but they themselves can't because they're clouded by the passion. So I also say, be passionate about your business, don't be passionate and emotional about your business, right? So that the emotion doesn't cloud your better judgment or the advice you might get from a mentor or, uh, or a coach. So that's a bit more entrepreneurial stuff. It's a very, very important point for us to, to learn. Now, there was, there's something that I, that I call the assisting elements of, of, of entrepreneurship. Does anyone in here play a team sport? Just a show of hands. Anyone play a team sport? Okay, come on, guys here. Now, uh, when you play a team sport, um, the person who scores the goal or stands the ball into the net, they usually get the credit for scoring that goal, which is fine. But if you took the other players off the, top, off the pitch, that person would never be able to score that goal. So what happens is the other players in the team, they have to provide a life ball, an enabling environment for that goal to be scored. Yeah? And that goal can only be scored because that player is, um, that the conditions are conducive for success. Does that all make sense? Yeah? But what we do is the goal in entrepreneurship is the contract, it's the, it's the money in the bank, it's the, um, it's the new client. So we focus on those things as key performance indicators, as key factors to our success. But what we don't think about are the assisting elements of entrepreneurship. So two things that you need to think about when you leave here today is think about are you in an enabling or a disabling environment for your business, for yourself as an entrepreneur? Do you have factors which are conducive to your success? about that in a little more detail. But this is really important. And what I've done is I've developed, if you go to entrepreneurship.org, um, you'll see this little graph, and you'll be able to sign up to some more information. But essentially, what I've done is I've broken down what I call the five elements of, of entrepreneurship. And this is how they go. So the first element is around, on the top left, is around your passion. And your passion should be your work. In an ideal world, you do what you love and you'll get paid for it. On the top right, we have um, your health. So whether it's your physical health or your, your nutritional health. On the, best, on the bottom left, you have um, family, relationships with your family and friends. And on the bottom right, you have overall well-being or something they call it spirituality. And right in the middle is you have you. Right in the middle. And you are what I call the fifth element. But you can only be the best you that you can be if all of the other four elements are balanced. And what I've done is, I've been quite fortunate to have been around really successful entrepreneurs, millionaire and billionaire entrepreneurs over the last few years. But I've also been around entrepreneurs who never quite made it out of the game. And when I published my second book in 2012, Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur, I was fascinated by what the difference was between these two individuals, right? Between these two types of individuals. And what became clear quite quickly were the guys who were failing, all they were doing was focusing on just getting the money. All I'm going to do, I just want to get the money, I just want to set up, I don't care if I don't see my friends, I don't care if I spend time with my family, I don't care about my health, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to forfeit it all just to get the money in the bank. And there are people out there who will encourage you to do that. They'll say, well, you know, if you're, you know, if you, if you get, become really ill, you've got money in the bank, it's all been worth it. But I'm not sure that's what we should be teaching the next generation once they start around. But the individuals who have become really successful and not just become successful and burn out, but those individuals who've been able to sustain a very long and a very long sustainable level of success have taken all of these aspects into account. And it's not something that they'll necessarily write in their book. You may, you may pick these things out of their biography, but it is, it, is, it is core and it is key to being successful as an entrepreneur, or what I would like to say, an entrepreneur. So the word ultra is from the Greek word beyond. So the idea is to go beyond the idea of enterprise just making money and consider these four assisting elements of entrepreneurship. Now, going back a little bit, I have lots of individuals come up to me and say, you know what, Julia, I recognise that entrepreneurship is a viable alternative to employment. I recognise that there are lots of people out there who've been able to become self-employed, who've been able to use entrepreneurship to change their lives and help their family, communities, and the world, and all this great stuff. But what should I be doing? There's so many opportunities out there. What is it that I should be doing? Should I be selling cars? Should I be doing a mobile app? Should I become a 
go to that right book. What is it that I should be doing? And this is the answer to the question. And, I, and again, I've worked this out through my own example. I get them to do a very, very basic exercise. You get a black piece of paper. On the left hand side, you write down excellence. And on the right hand side, you write down passion. And, you, and, in, in, and in the silo, in the vacuum, you write down what you're really good at. In fact, scratch that, what you're excellent at. And then on the other side, you write down what you're passionate about. Because they're not, they're not necessarily going to do the same thing. Once you've made that list, you should be able to draw lines of correlation between some of those two areas. And this was the list that I did for myself. And this was the list that made me go into start of my first digital agency. Because I could see that I loved, you know, that I was passionate about um, passionate about martial arts, passionate about the internet, technology, music, and so on. But I was also really good at marketing, project management, creative writing, and the process of getting stuff done. And I could clearly see that internet and marketing are married together, and technology and creative writing are married together, which is actually how I marketed my first business completely across social media, just by content marketing. So when this is, so this is really important. And the reason why this is really important is because this differentiates whether you are the genuine Kermit or whether you're not your his evil twin, right? And oftentimes you'll see people, and I'll go into the subtle success factors in a minute, but you'll see people pivoting from one business model to the next, and it's because they're trying to work out what they're good at and what they're passionate about, even if it's just subconsciously. But this is a tool that anyone can use to work that out quite early on. And it does, I don't care if you've been in business for five, ten, five years, ten years, if you've invested a hundred grand, at some point, if you don't get this right, something's going to go south, something is not going to work out. And I've done it, and I've realised this because I've studied lots of, again, successful entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs who haven't been so successful. So, what are the simple success factors? So, for the last hundred years, if you went to a business consultant, a traditional business consultant, they'll say to you, in order to have a successful business, you need to do these things. You need to get a business plan. You need to do your marketing. You need to set your goals. You need to look at the market. You need to get your, get your team together. Look at the competition. You need to innovate. Think about your strategy, right? Now, all of those things, anybody can tell you. None of those things are rocket science anymore. In 2014, we have such an overload of information. There's so much stuff you can get online, um, on some amazing websites, that will teach you all of this stuff, right? And this stuff has been probably 100 years old. And you do need to get this right. But before you get this bit right, what you need to do is look at what I call the subtle success factors. And some of the subtle success factors are things like pivoting, or what I call entrepreneurial agility. And pivoting is really important because our market in today's world moves at such a fast rate, it means that you might have made an assumption about your market. You might have made an assumption about your sector. But when that market or that sector changes, if you're not able to pivot or move quickly enough to react to the changes in that market, then you're going to be dead in the water. So companies like Instagram are a really good example of businesses that started off doing one thing. So Instagram started off being a location-based picture sharing network. Right? But then they quickly realised that people were just using the filters to make their, their photos look better than they would. Right? So they listened to their user base and they, they moved it quite quickly. And this was over the course of just maybe 18 months or so. They moved it quite quickly, looked at what the users were actually doing as opposed to what they thought people wanted. And you know, the rest is history, they did really well, got caught by Facebook, and so on and so forth. And there were lots of companies who used this. So instead of trying to theorise and you know, um, calculate exactly what's going to happen over the next 6, 12, 18 months, what you're supposed to do is start really quickly, test the market, use your entrepreneurial agility to change, test and move with where you see the demand or how you can see the, um, the market reacting to what it is that you're doing. But I've realised, especially for small businesses, it's actually you as the business owner. You think people are buying your product, but that's not what they're buying. They're buying you, right? People will buy stuff because they like you. People do business with people they like, essentially. And the only reason, the only way you can become likeable is if you're genuine, is if you're transparent, and as if, you, if you're honest with what it is that you're doing. So very early on in my business, again, I did a lot of content marketing. It was the only way I could promote what I was doing. I was blogging for, for dear life. And people would ask me, Julie, why are you giving away your knowledge? Why are you telling people everything you knew? But I said it was the only way that I could build credibility. It was the only way that I could show people that I knew what I was talking about. And in actual fact, that credibility built to a degree where people then saw the value of what I was doing and were willing to then part with their hard-earned cash for that service. 
um, an openness. This is a very important one. There's a gentleman called, called Thomas Powell, who's the founder of a very early social network called the Academy. He talks about being open. Because of the social networks, we are no longer seem to be separated from anybody, probably, probably at least half of that. And what we find is that there is so much random stuff going on, and I'll come to this in a minute, there's so much random stuff going on, whether it's opportunities, whether it's networking, whether it's relationship building, that if we are, if we act in a closed capacity and we shut off having conversations, building relationships, going to events or learning new things, um, then it can really impede our ability to progress as entrepreneurs, right? Um, and what some people may call serendipity, if you speak to any successful entrepreneur, I will guarantee you, at some point in their journey, they will say, I was lucky, I was in the right place at the right time, the stars were aligned for me, it was serendipity, I didn't know I was going to meet this person, right? And it's what you might call the science of luck. But the science of luck really is about, um, it's about doing stuff like relationship building. It's about doing stuff like being random. You know, I, I spoke to a woman who runs a very successful masterminding um, organization. And she said her entire approach is about being random and open. That is her entire approach. And it doesn't sound scientific. It doesn't sound like the kind of thing that the, you know, um, business world of old would teach you to they would say, no, you've got to plan exactly what's going to happen step by step. But again, successful business people know that's not what, that's not how it works in the real world. In the real world, there's a lot of stuff that happens randomly. Um, there's a lot of relationship building that you've got to do. So instead of a woman talking about relationship building, a lot of people think about networks, right? But a network, you're just my associate, you're just an acquaintance. But when you're building a community, you actually have relationships. You have people that like you, potentially love what you're doing. And relationships have a value to them. Have a much higher value than somebody who's just an acquaintance. And again, um, business people will tell you, successful entrepreneurs will tell you, that their network is worth more than gold. So it's something that is very, it's very important, key, um, cornerstone to build um, in your business as you're going. And again, touch on it, masterminding. The idea of masterminding popularised by Napoleon Hill. Um, and you've even got, um, you know, rappers like Rick Ross, and then there are masterminding because the idea behind it is that you can leverage more than one mind to achieve in a short space of time what you can potentially achieve in a lifetime. And um, I think it's a very, very important aspect for people to, to, to latch onto that, and that's masterminding, so learning from the group mind. But also mentoring, and, and that's learning from someone's experience. So people think, what's the difference between mentoring and coaching and consulting? Well, really what a mentor is going to give you is their experience, and their experience in that industry. And if we go back to the fact that we know we're going to fail, we just need to get over that. We're going to fail, right? But it's how much you fail, how hard you fail, and you know whether or not you can recover, and how you recover. And experienced entrepreneurs who can who act as mentors, they can help you to navigate the minefield of failure. So you can, you know, fail more quickly, fail in the right direction, fail more just effectively, and so on and so forth. Um, and coaching, and coaching is really about development of yourself. So people ask, what is business coaching? Think of it as, as a sports coach, golf coach, for example. Tiger Woods, when he was at, at his peak, he had two coaches, which is the reason why he was at the top. When Eric Schmidt first became the CEO of Google, the first thing one of his peers told him was to get a business coach and a business mentor. And he said, well, I'm the CEO of Google, why would I need one of those? Well, in order for you to stay the CEO of Google and to make the company a success, you need to be able to have somebody to bounce with, you need a sounding board, you need someone to talk to, someone to help coach you through this process. It's really important. So, the, old, the entrepreneur success formula, I've broken it down really simply, and I truly believe that success is passion plus excellence. I don't think it's any more complicated than that. Each one of these strands can break down into their own um, schools of thought and their own books, and there's lots of detail that can go behind each one of these principles. But I honestly believe that in order for you to be a success, you've got to marry what you're passionate about, so your passion turns hard work into something that you enjoy, and excellent. And the reason why you've got to be excellent is because people expect the best. People only pay for the best today, because there are lots of people doing exactly the same thing. So if you're just mm, okay at something, this means someone who's excellent at that thing who will charge the same as you. Um, I met someone who came over to the stand yesterday, and he said, Julian, I am the most cost-effective person um, at this particular service that he was offering, and I work seven days a week. And I thought, you know what, those, those two things are going to separate you from the crowd, because it means, and also he said, you're very responsive. So he kind of nailed in three descriptive terms what set him apart from the competition, because otherwise, on the base of it, you do what everyone else does, right? So he was able to exactly um, articulate what made him excellent and why. 
So what I've done is, last year I did 365 sayings for entrepreneurs um, that I came up with myself. I just want to take a quick look at some of them now. And um, so for example, being at the top doesn't mean you should stop. So sometimes you feel that sometimes entrepreneurs get to a certain level and they kind of start coasting. And when they start coasting, that's when they become number two. Because whilst you're coasting, somebody else is trying to take number one spot, right? Um, create reaction, not actions. This is really important. So in the marketplace, we're trying to um, we're trying to get people to act. We're trying to get them to click on our buy now button, buy our book, look through a coach, um, sign up to our service, whatever it is. But that's not what turns people on. You need to get them to react to something. Now that something doesn't necessarily have to be your physical product. It could be a blog you've done, it could be a video, it could be a t-shirt you're wearing, it could be anything that you do, but you've got to get people to react to something that you're doing, and that reaction almost acts as a hook to bring them into your, your product, right? Um, you, you have no competition, and even though you know some investors might be screaming at me, Julian, yes, there, are, there is competition, but I actually believe that you as a person, you do not have competition. No matter what it is that you're doing, nobody's going to do what you do in the way that you do it. So when, Julian, when people say to me, Julian, who's your competition? I say, I don't have any competition. And it's not because I'm being big-headed, but it's because I truly believe that the way that I do what I'm doing, no one else is going to do that. But that's only because I've worked out what I'm good at and what I'm passionate about, so that I can articulate it and therefore be confident about it and wrap it up into something that I believe can have value to, um, to a customer, right? Um, what else? Focus on the thing that brings the biggest returns in. So, a um, gentleman told me about a book earlier on, I think it was, was the back somewhere, and he said it was a book um, by a gentleman, and it was about don't put this full stuff, right? Really important. Entrepreneurs tend to be really quite passionate, quite emotional sometimes, who sweat the stuff that doesn't really matter, right? And it would only take the cultural consultant to come in and say, well, you haven't done you know, a balance sheet for a year, um, you haven't analysed your competition, you haven't thought about your story, you haven't um, tested, uh, you haven't done any case studies, you haven't asked your customers a few basic things, right? And you've been sweating the scores, so that's really important too. Um, and then lastly, um, landing is just as important as taking off. So sometimes we think, right, the most important thing to do is to start my business, I've got to take off, right? But once you've taken off, at some point, you've got to land in your sector, you've got to land amongst your customers, you've got to land amongst your people. And sometimes, if you, um, if you burn out, this is the idea of not, not, being, not burning out, and the idea of being able to sustain what you've been able to do. There's no point using up every resource and every ounce of energy, the last pound you've got in the bank, to take off on your business, then something happens. And again, it goes back to a strategy around recovery, a strategy around hitting the ground, breaking that fall, and being able to land. Um, I developed an entrepreneur app which encapsulates all of the content that I do, so feel free to download that. Um, I have an entrepreneur concierge service, so um, I partnered with one of the UK's top concierge services. So essentially, you go to the UK, you sign up, you buy some credits, and each month you can use those credits to get people to do anything from monitor your phones, develop your business cards, mow your lawn, anything to do with personal business. Now, the reason why this is really important, and I learned this lesson far too late in my entrepreneurial career, is that entrepreneurs tend to do everything. And the reason why they tend to do everything is because they're probably quite good at everything. Entrepreneurs are, are multi-talented people, right? But just because you can do everything, it doesn't mean you should do everything. And this is what I had to learn very quickly, right? So your ability to delegate, and there's an article I read by Oprah Winfrey, she said that you know, the, the, the top 40 things you need to do before you hit 40, and the number three was delegate, right? The number three was delegate. And the reason why you need to delegate, because you're lazy, not because of anything else, anything, anything like that, but the reason why you need to delegate is because generally the entrepreneur is a person who has the vision, who can see top down, and who's blue sky all day. And that's probably where the entrepreneur is best placed, right? Which is why CEOs have a COO, an operations director generally, so that they can still blue sky and the operations person takes care of the day to day stuff. Some of us in here can't afford to have a COO, but what we can do is of course to outsource to freelancers all around the country and all around the world to get some of the small stuff done that we can't do. This presentation is a perfect example. I could have done this presentation myself, but I didn't. I outsourced it because I had other things that I needed to do, right? So it freed up my time and what might have taken me five hours was taking this guy one hour. So it's about the management and valuing your time more than anything else, right? Um, I've developed a number of um, entrepreneur magazine publications which you can check out um, at the stand. Um, entrepreneur merchandise, I'm sure most of you have seen. Um, and I've done a, uh, a couple of cartoon characters for primary school children called entrepreneurship.is. And essentially, the idea behind these is to teach young people 
about entrepreneurs from a very young age. So entrepreneurship is changing yourself before changing the world. Um, entrepreneurship is being passionate about your emotional. Entrepreneurship is celebrating success. And entrepreneurship is making the impossible possible. And so on and so forth, right? So I'll just go back. Some of these are actually from my own personal um, learnings, right? So um, I, I, I very rarely celebrated success. I remember my business partners and I were being sure that we had our offices. We started a really big deal, and we would just keep going on. We just keep working, right? And we, we never really celebrated the success. Um, and celebrating success isn't just about popping a bottle of champagne. But it's about looking back, um, you know, in, in a non-stressed out space, thinking about, okay, how did that work? How, how did we, you know, how did we get to that level of success? What is it that we did that turned that customer on? What is it that we did that was slightly different, right? And that's why some of that stuff is important. Paul is both about being passionate uh, and not emotional about your business, and so on and so forth, right? So, speed forward a little bit. And the last kind of product that I've been developing is um, a group of entrepreneurial superheroes called the Entrepreneurs. Um, and this is going to be much like the Expo Avengers. They are metaphors for entrepreneurship go around the world solving the, solving the problems um, of entrepreneurship. So you can, you can look out for that. But I've given you a lot of information hopefully today, but there are five key things that I'd like you to take away with you. The first thing is what your business should do. I honestly believe before anybody even gets a business card printed, registered to the, registered to the domain name, going to an accountant, you really do need to work out what business should you do. And if you've committed to a business already, knowing in your heart of hearts, it's really not what I should be in because I'm the imposter here, then reevaluate. Okay? Fail fast, fail cheaply, or fall forward. So think about exactly what it is you should be doing. Think about the assisting elements of entrepreneurship because you know a lot of people may not say it publicly, but a lot but oftentimes the reason why businesses don't work is because one of these factors hasn't been in place, right? Think about how I, mean, I know how important it is for me to have the family and friends network that I have to do what I do. Without it, I, I, I'd be stuck. There would be no way that I could pump out the amount of information, the amount of work that I do. Your, your physical and nutritional health is extremely important to you. Most entrepreneurs are very stressed out. Um, they, 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 they fall into um, ill health and therefore it, 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 it impacts their business tremendously. In fact, some superstar examples of that. Think about the simple success factors. Yes, they are important, but those you can pick up in any you know, good business book. They are, they are really important. But then think more about the simple success factors. And the simple success factors, to be honest, people who are you know, within the entrepreneur world have only really recognized this in the last five years. It is very new. It's a very new area of, uh, of information around, around regarding entrepreneurship. And I was saying to somebody earlier that I honestly believe that the subtle success factors of entrepreneurship are going to become more and more important in the next five to ten years, and they will become the focus as we see more and more entrepreneurs demonstrating success based on these subtle success factors. And then lastly, the entrepreneur success formula. Success equals passion plus excellence. And with that, I thank you for your time and I'm open for any questions. What are the key things to look at whilst public speaking? It's a very good question. So the key things to look at whilst public speaking is to picture everybody naked. No. Definitely don't do that. This is my moment to make a Um no, the key things to do on public speaking is to know what you're talking about. That's number one. Know what you're talking about, and you've got to be very honest, be very honest, and be very open. So know what you're talking about, be honest, and be open. The best way to promote your business is by word of mouth. So using the social networks, and I, I know this young man has been retweeting me over the last few days, so I know he's very active on Twitter. But the best way is, um, and anyone will tell you this, whether they're new age or old age, the business school, right? It is word of mouth. So it's word of mouth, and the best way to generate word of mouth today is social media. But the way to keep word of mouth going is to do a really good job. I know it sounds basic, I know it sounds obvious, but most people don't do this. It's to do a really good job at every element of your business. So not just the delivery. So you can say, okay, I bake cakes. I'm really good at baking cakes. But are you good at responding to your customers on time? Are you good at following up with them? Or is your website any good? You know, uh, how, how, how is your telephone, um, how is your phone calls being answered? All of, the, all of the elements of your business need to be really, really good. Because people don't just buy your, your product, they buy your service, they buy your experience. And you often see here people say, oh, well, you know, I've gone with this service 
provided because they just got better customer service. The products are the same, the services are the same, but the overall experience that you get is what people buy into oftentimes because that's what will differentiate. So really, really focus on that.